It's a weekday matinee game as the Pirates get ready to take on the San Francisco Giants. A bunch of kids on hand. Why not? It's a kid's game. The Pirates and the San Francisco Giants. The rubber match of this three-game series as the Pirates host the top club in the National League West. The Buccos took two of three from Toronto. Chance to take two of three from the Giants. Greg Brown along with Bob Walk. And Bob... The Pirates are not only winning some games this homestand, they're doing it in dramatic fashion. Yeah, it's a very exciting uh, homestand so far for the fans. You get to, to see all these comeback wins. Uh, comeback wins usually mean uh, big hits at exciting times, and, and that's what the, uh, the Pirates have been doing. My favorite so far was when you had that 60-second downpour. Remember that when Walker hit the double off the wall? I think we're about to see it right here. How dramatic was that? What, what, a, great, what a great scene. That was Saturday. Roy Hobbs, Neil Walker, playing hero. And last night, of course, Marte, you saw his walk-off home run on Friday. Well, this will be a walk-off triple and an error thanks to the replay. What a finish last night. Initially, he was called out a minute and 14 seconds later after the Pirates challenged it. Safe. So says Jerry Lane. So says Starling Marte. The Pirates and the San Francisco Giants ready to play ball this afternoon. See if the Bucs can come up with another walk-off. Garrett Cole, the Cole train, goes this afternoon against San Francisco. He'll be opposed by Tim Lincecum. It's the Pirates and the Giants coming up next. coming out to talk to home plate umpire Quinn Walcott. So this one's going to be reviewed, and if it is overturned, the Pirates will win the game. Safe! Yeah. Safe! That's the Pirates win! How about that? What a way to win this ball game. Indeed, what a way to win on the challenge. 
Pirates have a chance to take two of three, and there is Starling Marte heading out to his position in left field. With our field cam. Marte really enjoying batting in the, well, seventh, sixth, or most recently that fifth spot out of the leadoff spot as kids have taken the field. So, young Pirate fan, we'll get a Starling Marte autograph baseball. A lot of kids on hand this afternoon for the Pirates and the Giants. Game six of the nine game homestand. Red Hurdles Club will look at this lineup. Giants skipper Bruce Bochi presents this from Honda. Gregor Blanco, Hunter Pence, 1 2, then Brandon Belt, who's hitting 309 with seven of his eight home runs coming on the road. Michael Morse hits cleanup. Hector Sanchez, the switch hitting catcher, gives Buster Posey the day off. Brandon Crawford is the shortstop. Then it's Brandon Hicks, Joaquin Arias, and Tim Lincecum. That order facing Garrett Cole. Uh, Cole not having a, a real good start his last time out, but. You expect uh, a pitcher like Cole to really be able to bounce back and earlier this year he did that after uh, having a poor start the very next one he went out there he threw uh, I think it was eight innings of one run baseball. I think Garrett's going to do that similar type job this afternoon. He's going to go out and he's gonna really go after the hitters be aggressive like he always is and uh, shut these guys down. Not that he needs extra motivation but a chance to take a series and of course this is the club against whom he made his major league debut last year. Starling Marte, Andrew McCutcheon, Travis Snyder in the outfield left to right. Pedro Alvarez, Ike Davis on the corners. Up the middle, it's Jordy Mercer and Neil Walker with Chris Stewart catching Garrett Cole. Marte has become very popular. Walk-off hero twice on this homestand. Pirates have nine home wins. Five of them have been walk-offs already this season. One thing about Marte we've always thought about is the athleticism that he has and, and how high that ceiling might be. And, and every now and then you get a week or so where he just takes over and you start thinking to yourself, wow, this this is a, a star type player that really fits right alongside McCutcheon out in that outfield. Here's the man that Jerry Cole faced in his big league debut. Gregor Blanco, June 11th last year. Jerry Davis is the home plate umpire and crew chief. Chris Conroy at first, Phil Cuzzy at second, Quinn Walcott at third. Walcott was the home plate umpire last night. Initially made that call, and then after review, it was overturned. Inside. Cole made his debut June 11th here last year against Tim Lincecum and the Giants. Won an 8-2 decision. He struck out Gregor Blanco on three pitches. That won't happen here. So the third pitch is a strike. It's 1-2. 95 from Cole. June 11th against these Giants. And strikes him out off speed. And Chris Stewart will throw to first to complete the strikeout. So it takes a couple extra pitches, but he does the exact same thing. Strikes out Gregor Blanco to start the game. And Bob, this was so electric that, that night at PNC Park. Well, we had uh, been waiting for him to come up. Uh, very highly touted. And to see him come up and throw 100 miles an hour and, and dominate a, another team like that was absolutely a, a shot in the arm for the, the club. Uh, just another one of those great things that happened to the Pirates last year. Hunter Pence takes inside. Uh, sometimes a young player comes up and there's a lot of fanfare and it kind of turns out to be a little bit of a dud. Well, certainly wasn't the case with Cole last year. Great pitching, uh, the, the eye popping radar gun numbers. Are, it was awesome to watch. It really was. One and two on Pence. As any young guy, you kind of start off with the number five guy. You're 
bottom bottom of that rotation and then he just slowly started working his way up and, uh, and when it came to the uh, the last game of the playoffs who got the nod. Bounce left side Alvarez that pick Ross to take off a little bit. He gets Pence. Two outs. Allegheny Health Network Super Bowl, the 360 spin. Ball came up off the lip a bit. So Cole retires Blanco and Pence, and now it's Brandon Belt. Well, it was in some kind of slump when he arrived, but slowly getting out of it. Did not start Friday night, but was involved. And he hits this fly ball toward right center field deep. And Brandon Belt, indeed, starting to come on. That's his ninth home run of the season, and it gives the Giants a 1 nothing lead in the first. Paul being aggressive with that fastball. Sixth homer allowed by Cole this season. Belt okay, and clubs his ninth. If you're going up against him, I mean, this is, I think, one of the strategies you have to use. You're going up against Cole, as you look for that fastball first pitch because he comes after everybody. He is not shy about saying, "Here it is. I'm going to get ahead." Belt has now homered in every city in which the Giants have played this season. Eight of his nine homers on the road. He's hit one at his home yard in San Fran, but Arizona, in LA, in San Diego, Colorado, Atlanta, and now Pittsburgh. One back of the league leader, Giancarlo Stanton of the Marlins. He's come right back. Uh, two fastballs in a row to, to Morse, the big power hitter. Cole is not shy about using that fastball. He, doesn't back away from it ever. Two and one. Well hit in the air the other way. Line out to Snyder. Two out homer for Brandon Bilt gives the Giants the early lead. Now the Bucks will come to bat against Tim Lincecum. Brandon Belt early lead for the Giants Travis Snyder will lead things off here for the Pirates in the bottom of the first the rest of the lineup there is brought to you by Toyota Travis Snyder will be followed by Neil Walker and Andrew McCutcheon last 14 games McCutcheon hitting at a 415 clip Nick Alvarez Starling Marte Ike Davis in the middle and it's Jordy Mercer Chris Stewart and Garrett Cole against Tim Lincecum. 
high ERA that uh, Greg was talking about earlier, 512. That's come up. It used to be a lot like Cole in his younger days. He'd go out there and have that big, overpowering fastball. Not anymore. Two time Cy Young Award winner. His first two full years in the big leagues, 2008 2009. Lincecum won the Cy Young. A couple of Washington natives here. Tim Lincecum against Travis Snyder. The first couple of times saw Lincecum pitch, uh, his stuff was just eye popping. It, you immediately after the first couple of pitches, you're like looking at each other and say, wow, it was an amazing arm. From Bellevue, Washington, facing the man from Kirkland, Washington, Travis Snyder, leading off and draws the leadoff walk. Bob uh, Lipsicum's uh, velocity down certainly. A few miles an hour since those days where he won the Cy Young and uh, very inconsistent. Last year was an up and down season, mostly down, but then he throws out of nowhere a no hitter last summer. Hard to figure. Yes, it is. I think what that shows you more than anything else that uh, there's a little bit of luck that goes into yeah. no hitters. He certainly is, doesn't have no hit stuff anymore. Ball one. I was a little surprised to see that big contract offered to him though. In the offseason, the way he has kind of deteriorated. Signed with a two year extension, October 22nd, 2013. Was it last year that he offered to go to the bullpen? Yeah, he did spend some time in the bullpen, uh, especially their playoff run and into the World Series a couple of years ago. Oh, was that what it was? Yeah. Oh, it was last year. Which is taken outside. Neil Walker ahead 2 and 0. He made uh, five of his six appearances in the postseason two years ago out of the pen. What you see with Lenscombe is not out of the ordinary. This is kind of more ordinary than uh, you would think. The guys come up and they, as the years go by, their stuff starts deteriorating and they have to change as a, as a pitcher. And some guys. Don't do a very good job of it, and some guys uh, do a very good job. See, he's played a lot of trouble against uh, lefties in particular. Hasn't thrown a strike yet. Seven pitches. There's one. A lot of talk about Greg Maddox about how he just you know didn't really have a lot of stuff, but good control. Well, that he evolved into that when he first came up with the Cubs. He had a very good arm. He threw very hard. I've got maybe. Like uh, Cole Hard, but you know, low to mid 90s. And he evolved and actually became a better pitcher as uh, as his stuff deteriorated. The control became so much more important to him. He has walked nine in 32 innings this season. Overshift against Neil Walker. We talked about this on the radio side last night. They're shifting him more than they do Alvarez. Switch hitting Neil Walker. It's now three and two. Travis Snyder has not attempted a steal this season. Lincecum historically has had trouble against the stolen base. And there goes Snyder on a three two and it's not foul out of play. We talked last night about how we're going to have to bring back the weather map to show like right. hot zones where the thunderstorms yeah. are, where that heavy rain is. We will do that. Mm -hmm. Well, that's kind of an old-fashioned way of showing where pitches hits. It's not the weather map. We're not using yeah. the weather map. It's the radar map. Three and two, the count. Four pitch walk to Snyder. Lincecum fell behind Walker 3 0. Now Walker, after taking a strike, has fouled off a couple. Snyder was off in the previous pitch. 
Wants to come just now. Going into the stretch. And there goes Snyder again. And it's hit in the air to right. But that's going to hook foul. Stays three and two. Against the Giants, Walker has hit safely in 11 of his 14 career games here at PNC Park, played against San Francisco. But 0 for 3 last night. He's 3 for 8 with a home run in his career against Lincecum. And another 3 2 pitch. Chop to the right side. Snyder will reach second as Belt makes the routine play at first. Change up, right? I guess it was up in a way. I think it was up in a way. I saw live. There's something you noticed uh, on that strike zone. Almost all the pitches, except for I, I think two on the outside corner or away, but they were playing in the pole, thinking that the book must be hey, even when you pitch him away, he's still going to go out and try to hook the ball. Because they sure stayed this bait with him the whole time. McCutcheon is hit. No, nope, foul ball. Another thing I thought was a little, a little odd too. There wasn't a single pitch at or below the knees. Everything was was up. Right off the knob. Almost got hit. Man. It was almost a Willie Starchel-like reaction from McCutcheon. Mm -hmm. McCutcheon fouls it off, and he's in the hole, 0 and 2. Was, uh, for years, uh, baseball ran a video, a blooper video that included Willie Stargell ducking out of the way of a pitch. And Stargell kept the barrel of the bat upright as he ducked his head and the ball hit the barrel. And Stargell got up, looked at the home plate umpire, looked back at the pitcher, looked at the catcher, grinned. This ball hit high to right field. Snyder going to be waved home. Hunter Pence's throw toward the plate is going to be off the mark. McCutcheon gets the RBI to tie the game and goes to second on the throw. That was kind of an ill-advised throw to just airmail everybody, put it all the way to home plate. That ball was hit far enough toward right center that I, I don't see how there was going to be a play at the plate. A little hanging slider and hit the other way. But see how Pence had to kind of angle over and come in a long way? I mean, his his opportunity to actually and, and make it out there is is slim and none. And Bob, don't you, as a right fielder, have to almost make that decision as soon as I go, start going to my right? Right before it's impossible touch the ball. to throw out a guy. Before he even touch the ball, he should have thought, hey, either hit the cutoff guy or throw it to second. Yeah, bad play there by Pence. And now the opportunity uh, for another run presents itself with more speed at second base. Second baseman last night, A. Ray Adrianza. Ill-advised throw to third to try and get Marte, and that led to the victory. Let's see if Alvarez can take advantage of a Pence mistake. With all these kids here this afternoon, this place is going to get loud. To keep scoring runs. This is the kind of game that the youngsters like to watch. All these balls being hit out there, all the stuff to holler about. Not under that one. I just missed it. No one underneath it. Hutchins went just a few steps off the second base bat. Yeah, I don't think the youngsters came here to see a pitcher's duel. I think they want to see some home runs. Yeah, this ball just got underneath it. You could hear the way everybody was yelling. Could be a fun afternoon. We were talking about that in the open about how much uh, fun it's been for the fans as homestand with all the action going on. Today might be might be somewhere. Sterling Marte now. Four for nine in the series. Seven games hitting at a 400 clip. Line 
into left field. That will bring home McCutcheon. Marte into second base, rips a double to left, and the Pirates take a 2 1 lead. And absolutely blustered that ball. That's come, it's not throwing a lot of stuff that's fooling anybody. Everything seems to be, uh, you know, up thigh high or higher. I, I still, I, I would love to count how many pitches he's thrown below the knees. Can't be too many. He's thrown 19 pitches. He hadn't gone downstairs very well. Very often. Everything is up. Seventh RBI, fifth double of the season for Marte. Brings home McCutcheon. They keep the line moving. Another runner in scoring position. Now it's Ike Davis. He had a couple of hits last night. Another pitch. Way high. Really is not working the ball down at all. Old first round pick, 10th overall in 2006 by the Giants. Now, age wise, he should be riding in his prime right now. Probably, if you go by that, should have a little bit more of that fastball left than he does. He's thrown well his last four times out, 291 ERA over his last four outings. First two times, gave up 11 runs and 10 innings. Mike Davis gets encouragement from the bench. Jeff Branson, his hitting coach, had a boy Ike win a battle. Davis, good to see him hit the ball hard a couple of times last night, including a gap shot into right center. Days one and two on Ike Davis. Single to right field just over the first base back his first time up last night. And then in his fourth inning AB against Tim Hudson, he doubled to the right center gap. So he had two of the five pirate hits. And that is up. Two and two. Then it comes eighth career start against the Pirates. Made four starts here at PNC Park. He's 0 2 in this yard, a 491 career ERA. His pitching coach is Dave Rigetti. Now that's hit hard, but a one hop shot to Hicks. The second baseman throws out Ike Davis. Travis Snyder walked to start things at the bottom of the first inning, and he scored from second on the base hit by Andrew McCutcheon. Lunchbox slides in, and now it's 2 to 1.
Baseball on Root Sports is brought to you by Toyota. Now's the time to go places with Toyota. Visit buyatoyota.com for special offers. And by PNC Bank for the achiever in you. Let's go Bucks. Second inning, Pirates now lead 2-1. to one. Starting Marte and Andrew McCutcheon. Involved in the offense in the top half. McCutcheon the RBI single and he scored on the Marte double. Hector Sanchez. Pirates had a lot of trouble getting him out. On Monday night. He was the catcher. Went four for seven. He drove in three. He was hitting 179 going into the game. On Friday night now batting 239. Mr. Posey gets the day off. Strike and it's one and two. Michael Morris talking with Posey and Pence. Two and two on Hector Sanchez. It's his ninth start of the season. Derek Cole, his seventh start. And he takes care of Sanchez with his second K. A few more off speed pitches uh, to Sanchez and the other guys have been up there. He set up that fastball. It wasn't one of his best, just 94. It's the result you're looking for swing and a miss. And now he faces Brandon Crawford. We talked with uh, Cole Friday night uh, about good friends. Brandon Crawford, uh, two UCLA products, and Cole dating Crawford's sister Amy. Balls and no strikes. Crawford one for three in last night's game, two for seven in the series. He was drafted in 2008, fourth round pick by the Giants out of UCLA. Cole by the Pirates in the first round, and there's a base hit on the 2 0 pitch. Bragan writes. Yep. For now. Well, I think Cole can say, Yeah, you got a hit, but busted your bat. Free shirt Friday. Pirates hosting the St. Louis Cardinals. First 25,000 fans will take home one of these Russell Martin t shirts thanks to Milan. For tickets and to see all of this year's t shirt designs, you can go to pirates.com slash free shirt Friday. Pirates take on the Cardinals, reigning National League champions. Of course, the team, the Pirates, played in the National League Division Series. Bucks took two of three from the Redbirds opening. Weekend here. The ball popped up easy for Alvarez in foul territory. Takes care of Brandon Hicks, two outs. Blew up another bat. Well, if you're going up there and you're looking fastball, I mean, to swing at that ball up on your hands like that, you had to be looking breaking ball. Odd. Because if you're thinking, okay, he's going to start me off with a heater, at no point does that ball ever look right. like as a strike. So why would he be thinking that? And he, it is odd, huh? Yeah, the, the first pitch fastball yeah. up and in to swing and yeah. jam yourself that badly and break your back. And after you'd been set up, maybe with a couple of right. breaking balls, yeah, that happens. Just the timing of it is, is kind of unusual. First pitch from Cole to Joaquin Arias is a strike. Pablo Sandoval also gets the day off today. So Arias playing at third base. Bounce to the right side. Walker on to first. That'll take care of the Giants. 
Brandon Crawford had a one out single. He is stranded as Arias grounds out. Pirates lead the Giants two to one. For the Pirates have a 2-1 lead as we head to the second inning of play. Chris Stewart with the chance to face his former teammates in the Giants and Tim Lincecum instead of catching him, he's watching him. But back in 2011, he had this to say, quote, you have a five foot nothing guy out there weighing 150 pounds on a good day, twisting and contorting his body, and then he releases a mid-90s fastball at you or his devastating changeup, and I feel sorry for the hitters. End quote. But again, guys, as we talked about the different version of the freak we're seeing now, that was back in 2011. Things have changed. Yeah, that's for sure. He uh, does not seem to be the same pitcher, Dan, that he was when he was winning those back to back Cy Young awards and striking out 250 plus batters. Jordy Mercer has this pitch back and out of play. It's one ball and two strikes. On the shortstop, who was 0 for 3 last night, 2 for 7 in the series. And Lincecum struck out 265 batters to lead the league in 2008. Led the league again the following year, punching out 261. Led the league a third consecutive season, 231 punch outs. Still up there every year in strikeouts, but it's it's a different pitch. that could be. The uh, long long yeah. listed graciously 511 170 back to what uh, Chris Stewart quoted about him two and two Chris Stewart caught Lincecum and the other Giants pitchers back in 2011 after Buster Posey was uh, knocked out that the broken ankle that collision at home plate the second half of that year. This ball hit in the air. And that's going to drop in foul territory. That's what uh, you and I were talking about the ir irony of that. Last night the, the Buster Posey rule. They, they changed the rules this year the home plate collisions. And it's Buster Posey who backs away from Marte sliding in and the expanded replay really was set in motion a couple years ago when the Pirates uh, down in Atlanta played that 19 inning game and Jerry Meals the home plate umpire blew the call Michael Michael McHenry had received the ball in plenty of time the call was safe the Braves won the ball game and that along with the uh, Galarraga near no hitter for the Tigers kind of set in motion expanded replay so he had two those uh, converging moments as Mercer hits this ball high and foul out of play off to the left. 
Well, I see an awful lot of catchers uh, just going along and doing things the same way they've always yeah. done. And you know, I I hear about the rule about blocking mm -hmm. the plate, but guys are still doing it. But I mean, if you catch the ball and run the other way, the guy's going to be safe every time. That's pretty much what they have asked Posey to do since his I mean, return. It's, it, now, sir, strikes if out. you didn't have the replays and the umpires will give you the okay the ball beats you so you're yeah. out. You know kind of like the the, the phantom play out at yeah. second base. We'll look at this at, you know, finish of the year. Scott Cousins the collision in May of 2011. Tore up his left leg. Was out for the rest of the year. So the Giants tried to convince Posey from that point on to. I used Back to, away. You, you, you'd have that phantom play out at second base. You know it, that's the similar type thing on all tag plays over the years. If the ball beats you and, the, and you, you put the ball, glove down in front of the base or in front of the plate, you brought it up. Guy was out whether it was tagged or not. You can't do that anymore because now they're going to challenge it and they're going to see that the tag was missed. We've already seen that several times this year. So now the tag actually has to be applied. There's there's no phantom. Put the ball down and get it out of there like there used to be. Stewart, a base hit with one out. You know, that, I mean, how many times have we seen that over 20 years where somebody would make the catch? And in fact, they infielders were even taught, you know, you don't don't leave it down there all day. Get the tag down, get the glove out of there. That way the ball's not getting kicked out or anything like that. And you're always going to get the out, out call. And, and there were a lot of times you would know uh, the guy was never tagged, but nobody would ever say a word about it. The ball beating, the glove was down in front of the, the base, the guy was out. But the, that rule has changed now. The tag has to be applied or it'll be challenged and it's going to be overturned. Here, Cole at the plate. Once it foul. And that's what happened with the Jerry Mills play. Well, Marte the other day stole second on a overturned call, and this is again the play from last night. Yeah, the, the, the ball beating the runner doesn't really matter anymore. Right. We're talking about the Jerry Mills right. play. The Jerry Mills play was, Lugo, the runner. was where there was there was no challenge, obviously, at that time, and it was almost like Mills took it on his on himself to change the oh well the ball beat him he's going to be out to so, oh you really have to make sure you apply a tag. So it was like Mills tried to make the rules then like they are now, and that's why with the uproar was like wait a minute. What's going on? Yeah, here. that's set in motion. Really, this whole thing, and that's just so weird about last night. It would play. be and that would be a similar thing to the Mills. Oh, the plate would have been on a double play if you would have had the umpire make a safe call out at second base and have the game be lost on that, where all of a sudden you're going to in, in, enforce the neighborhood play that you can't have a neighborhood play. That 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 was the same thing to me as the play at the plate. Well, they took the bunt off. Cole showed bunt with two strikes, but he singles to center. Once again, the Pirates having trouble getting the bunt down, though Cole leads the team in sacrifice bunts. But it seems like there's nothing this guy can't do. Well, it's another thing that Cole has uh, quickly uh, kind of established himself as he's the best uh, hitting of the uh, hitter of the starters. He had a pinch hit single the other night. In the 13 inning game, and here taking the bunt off, and he singles into center. Now, I don't know if he did that on his own or not. Uh, if he did, I don't condone that because uh, for every base hit you're going to get, you're going to hit it to three or four double plays by doing that. So, I mean, it was great that he got the base hit right here, but more often than not, you're going to hit a ground ball at somebody, and now there's going to be a double play, and the inning's over. And why did you swing the bat when you were supposed to be bunting? If he did that on his own, I, I don't know. In fact, we've seen that 
this year, haven't we? Yeah. Where I think it was Cole, Cole no. himself. Oh. Swung on his own and hit into a double play. Here's Travis Snyder now with two on and one out. Walked on four pitches in the bottom of the first and scored on a McCutcheon single. Off speed, but the runners will move up 90 feet. That's a big wild pitch. I'm sure I'm wrong about this, but but I think that uh, that might be the first ball he's bounced all day. Maybe just cut kind of by surprise. Can you remember another ball yeah. bouncing no. in the dirt? Nope. Line to right field by Travis Snyder. This is going to score a couple runs. Travis Snyder, two-run single, gives the Pirates a 4-1 second inning lead. Let's come stuff right now, not real you know, impressive, and uh, you mix that with a uh, control that maybe is not what he's looking for. And there are some balls being uh, hit real hard. Snyder his 10th and 11th ribbies. Of the season, Walker grounded out to Brandon Belt in the first. Rips this one into center field. Boy, the Pirates really oh, are just barreling this ball up. I was just about to say they changed the uh, the shift. They don't have anybody on the second base side or second base, and boom, he puts one right through there. Well, why would they do? Why they uh, change la it? Last time up, well, you yeah. pointed it out that they did. Look, there's nobody there. Now, last time he was hitting at shortstop, standing right yeah. where this ball goes. Go figure. What makes them decide to change from that first inning at bat where he bounced to still Brandon pitch, Belt? Still pitched him away. Pitched yeah. him away. Went out and hooked it. There's Bochy's club now trailing Garrett Cole of the Pirates four to one. Cole helps his own cause, and now McCutcheon two on, still one out. You just see the Pirates very comfortable at the plate and anxious to get up there. Lincecum struggling with his stuff. McCutcheon single into right center field brought in Travis Snyder. 18 RBIs on the year now for McCutcheon. Broken bat pop up. Field fly, two outs. Touch jammed himself on that one. Something pretty slow. Here's Alvarez. Alvarez got under one. He didn't square up. He flied out to Hunter Pence and right. And now Lincecum wants to talk to Hector Sanchez. Alvarez is three for eight in his career against Lincecum. He's tied for fifth in the National League with eight homers. The seven game hitting streak came to an end last night. Still seems to be in a pretty good group batting 314 over his last eight ball games. Long 
discussion at the mound uh, a lot longer than you would have uh, thought for just maybe changing signs. Yet the shortstop in there though and talked for quite a while. Takes the big swing. All in one. A high changeup. I think that's the yeah. same. Same pitch. Uh, but McCutcheon got jammed on. And now 0 and 2. A couple times this series, Alvarez has hit a ball right to Brandon Crawford. He's not swung over on the other side a second. That is playing deep behind the bag. And one and two is the fastball from Lincecum misses to Pedro Alvarez. Here is Brandon Crawford behind Travis Snyder. Snyder driving in a couple of runs with a base hit. Walker singled him to second. That's out of play. 52 pitches thrown, less than two innings now by Lincecum. Sometimes when things are going really well and guys are seeing the ball hitting it hard, you, you get a little over anxious. And I think that's where Pedro is to this point of this at bat. You, you still have to make sure you get something down in the zone where you're comfortable at hitting it. Oh, down on strikes he goes. The final out, the Pirates get a couple, and after two, lead the Giants 4 1. Sports is brought to you by the Chevy Cruz and your Western PA Chevy dealers. And by Day Automotive, we're going to make your day. Let's go, Bucks. Buckos leading the San Francisco Giants 4 to 1. And we'll get to our this day in Pirates history brought to you by Day Automotive on this day in 1925. Bucks Glenn Wright turns an unassisted triple play. Cut a line drive off the bat of Jim Bottomley. Stepped on second. Doubled up Jim Cooney. Then tagged Rogers Hornsby. Third out of the ninth inning. Unfortunately, it came an inning after the Cardinals scored six in the eighth. That put them ahead 10 to 9 for the win. So a wild triple play. Red Cameron play that day? I don't think so. He did for a time, though, play for the Cardinals. Glenn Wright was uh, a pirate and a, and a Brooklyn Dodger, so I'm wondering if the trade maybe uh, they Ooh, played, yeah, certainly maybe teammates. Cameron and, and yeah and yeah. Wright played on the on the Brooklyn Dodgers. We were talking about that that maybe 
Glenn Cameron's uh, record for assists by a pitcher. Red Cameron. Red Cameron. What, what would I say? Glenn. <laughs> well, wasn't it Glenn Red Cameron? Yeah. Of course it was. Strikeout of Lincecum, one away. Now Gregor Blanco. Glenn Wright was a shortstop with the Pirates. He was with the Bucks from 1924 through 1928. His nickname was Buckshot. Glenn Buckshot Wright. Now, Gregor Blanco's nickname is White Shark. Played winter ball for a team called the Tiburones. The Sharks. And I don't think that's a good nickname to have when you're coming into Pittsburgh. How long has that big thing been up? Any idea? It's right there by the Joel Hanrahan bobblehead. I'll tell you what, the Sharks. Having a little bit of trouble early on, hoping to get things back together. Uh, some blown saves in the month of April, hoping to right the ship in May. Now three and one on Gregor Blanco, and the, the cast of characters kind of full bench. changing. Yeah, they brought the Phil Irwin in yesterday. Jason really thinks he's getting closer and closer. Hoping to throw off the mound before too long this week. Three and two on Gregor Blanco. Cole has soul, Cole train. Play off the uh, old TV show Soul Train and a swing and a miss at 97 miles per hour and that velocity creeping up again as the game goes on. Speaking of velocity, we have a tweet and you can tweet us at hashtag Bucks Booth. This is from BT Campbell. Where has Cole's velocity gone? I know mid 90s is above average, but I recall him regularly hitting 100 last season. I don't think he's had trouble at all with his velocity, has he? No, there's no. I mean, it's just, it was up there and off there real quick. But there's a there's the uh, average fastball velocity. There's essentially no difference. And he, he threw 97 in the first inning today. I mean, we just don't point it out every time he you know, gets way up there. And he didn't regularly throw 100 miles an hour. He touched it every now and then. And he's hit 100 a couple of times this year also. It's just when when a young guy comes up and, and throws a hundred mile an hour, you know, the, we let hot air balloons go and all kinds of things. It's confetti falls from the sky. You know? No, I don't know that. Yeah. Whoa, I, I, mile an hour. So, I've never but seen now, that. okay, he's done it. Let's turn the page and and you, you move on to getting guys out. Now, I would think that Cole will maintain this plus. Velocity of his for quite some time, but it'll start deteriorating a little bit over the years as they go by, and, and he'll become a little different pitcher, just like we were talking earlier about you know guys that have uh, changed over the years. Guys like Greg Maddox sometimes even get better as their uh, stuff backs off a little bit. How about uh, Hudson last night? I mean, he's a, a pretty good example of somebody that has. Uh, you know, evolved and turned the page, and still at an advanced age is is pitching and doing it at a very high level. But he doesn't have the same stuff he did as a youngster. Ball knocked down, and they got him. Three-one on the putout. But we'll point out that Cole did throw 100 miles an hour or more 11 times last year. But the point is, he's winning four to one.
Naples, so I am sick. Four to one Pirates lead here at PNC Park. Parallel Automotive League leaders stat, National League leaders in triples. The Pirates lead the National League along with the Arizona Diamondbacks with nine. The Major League leaders, the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim with 11. And Marte with that triple last night in the bottom of the ninth inning with two outs. What a crazy, dramatic, wild finish that was. Right after Alvarez had hit into a double play. Marte hit the ball off the wall and right past Pence. Second baseman threw past Sandoval, or at least off of Sandoval. Pablo Sandoval retrieved it. Threw to the plate. The throw beat Marte, but Buster Posey kind of backed away from the head first dive tag, and review showed Marte did score. First walk off after a challenge in Major League history. You know, there used to be a really big on telling everybody whatever you do, never go head first in the home plate. Yeah. Because you'd be going to the dentist the next day. The catchers would not. Allow that to happen. But with a new rule, all bets are off. Marte and the Pirates have gotten a little over anxious here with Lincecum. Yeah, well, Lincecum's starting to bounce some of those breaking yeah, that balls. Was way in front of the plate. If you look at the last three hitters and uh, Count up all the balls that have been in the strike zone. You, you might get to three or four out of all the pitches combined. But that is what we're talking about. It's almost like they have this early success here and they're chomping yeah. at the bit. Right to get, so up they get up there and, and they don't just want to start hacking at anything. I want to get my my hit, my ribby, my knock instead of uh, being patient about it. But I know that uh, Kutch jammed himself on a ball, a changeup, I think it was. Uh, uh, not in the strike zone. I think Pedro saw maybe one or two pitches that were strikes. Everything else outside the strike zone. And that at bat right there to uh, to Marte. Same thing. He got to show some patience and make sure he's throwing the ball over the over the plate. And then you'll get some swings and some good pitches to hit. Davis took a strike. Now fouls a pitch off from Lincecum. Mike Davis bounced out to second baseman Brandon Hicks his first time. And a base hit for Ike right Davis. Two hits last night. One out single here. Brings up Jordy Mercer. On this week's Inside Pirates Baseball, the guys do their best imitations of first base coach Rick Sofield. And Ike Davis continues to try to bring some new power to the Pirates and much more Inside Pirates Baseball presented by Allegheny Health Network today after post game on Root Sports. Now he didn't throw Ike a strike there either. All three of those pitches were outside the strike zone. See how Jordy Mercer approaches this at bat. This is the first pitch to second. Yeah. Safe calls. Ike Davis avoids the tag. Hicks continued to go at Davis. And that cost him. Jordy Mercer safe at first. Uh, as you see this, Hicks right now stops him. Now he's supposed to throw to first base. I think Bruce Bochy is going to argue that he should have been called out sooner going out of the baseline. But this is not the challengeable. Well, he should be arguing with his second baseman. He should go over right now and, and say, and argue, why, why, did you not, why didn't you throw that ball to first? That would be great. Because, I mean, that's the guy that there he is right there. That's the guy that messed up the double play. 
as soon as you stop the runner, now you got to throw the ball to first base. What's Ike going to do? If he throws to first base, what's Ike going to do? Right now, <laughs> when Ike turns his back to him, if he throws to first base, he has the double play. You get the force out, and now Ike is in a rundown. He's not going to get out of it. So don't argue with the, the umpire. Argue with your second baseman. Inning should be over if he makes a routine play for a second baseman at this level. You're shaking your head. You disagree or agree? Oh, I agree 100%. Oh, okay. Absolutely. Mix. Had uh, Ike Davis going back and instead of going to first, he continued with the play. Two and another count now on Chris Stewart, who singled and scored in the second. And three balls, no strikes. Stewart showing a patient approach here. Exactly. He's not. He's saying, "No, I'm not going to. I'm not going to chase the balls out of the strike zone." There they are. And a four pitch walk. That's the second base on balls allowed by Lincecum. He struck out Marte to start this inning. Marte swinging and pitches out of the zone. The last pitch well out in front of the plate bounced up there. Then Ike Davis singled on a pitch that was out of the zone. Mercer swung at the first pitch, bounced what should have been an inning ending double play to second. Now Stewart walks on four pitches, and Cole, who singled after failing to bunt, got to two strikes, singled into center field his last time up. And he takes ball one. Bruce Bochy's club. Had their uh, six game winning streak snapped last night. Still playing good baseball. They're leading the West by a game over the Rockies at 21 and 12 on the year. Check swing foul. His debut against Tim Lincecum. We talked about it last year. And how about his first big league at bat? The base hit. Scoring Pedro Alvarez, Eric Cole, and flashing the Z. Afterward, we talked to him about it. He said it was just all luck, but we're saying that there's more to it than that for Garrett Cole. His approach. Has five hits this season now in 13 at bats. Lindsay come out in front, one ball and two strikes. Just got a piece of. I think one of the, the things I like the best out of Cole is that you can't classify him as a anything but a baseball player. He gets it, doesn't he? Yeah, he's a. He's competitive. He wants to play. He wants to, uh, to to experience the whole thing like a baseball player. Hit, run, field, do everything. Bounce this ball. And on the first it goes. Pirates strand a couple, but still lead it four to one after three.
Baseball on Root Sports is brought to you by Barrel Automotive. We're driven to be better. And by Levin Furniture, proudly featuring solid wood American-made Amish furniture. For furniture that lasts, shop Levin. Let's go Bucks. 4-1 ball game going to the fourth inning here at PNC Park. Eric Cole against Tim Lincecum. MLB.TV Premium, the number one live streaming sports service celebrating 12 years. Join the millions of subscribers. Watch every out-of-market game live in true HD on over 400 devices. Visit Pirates.com for details. Turned out to be a nice day. Yeah, a little uh, jacket weather when we got here this morning, but it was warming up. Turned out to be a summer-like day. 58 degrees at game time. But sun starting to come out as the Pirates try to make it two out of three from the Giants. Off day tomorrow. And the Cardinals are coming in. Cole will face the three, four, five hitters in the San Francisco lineup. Starting with Brandon Belt, who homered with two outs in the first inning. That gives Belt nine home runs on the season and six now allowed by Garrett Cole, and this his seventh start of the season. Last year, Cole gave up a total of seven home runs in 19 starts. Balls behind Brandon Belt, two balls and no strikes. Three and oh. Strike in there to belt. Three and two. Tries to come back. Paul had a little run on it. A lot of those fastballs are fairly straight. That one uh, not so much. Took off. Took it away a little bit. To center, McCutcheon. He does come back to get Belt after falling behind the 3 0. 97. Well, we want to see how you root for your Buckos. Our ATT fan photo of the day. Submit the picture via Twitter. Use the hashtag BucksFanPhoto and we'll show them during our broadcast. Especially on a sunny afternoon in the Berg. How you root for the Pirates? Michael Morse lined out to right in the first. Morse two for ten in the series. Twenty four RBIs tied for fifth in the league. He's fourth in slugging. As he takes one ball and one strike. Good place to throw that fastball. And on his hands. Big guys like this, you don't want them to get any arm extension. Keep them tied up. And he singles into center with one out. Big man. Michael Morris, 6'5, 245 pounds. He's bounced around. Matter of staying healthy, really, for him. A couple of good years with the Washington Nationals. And the Giants signed him to a contract over the winter. And paying off so far. Here 
is Hector Sanchez. Cole struck him out to start the second. Sanchez came in batting 188 as a left handed hitter. Be nice to see a ground ball here. I think all the kids here want to see a strikeout. Oh, for the kids, huh? For the kids. Get a strikeout for the kids. I want to hear them yell. <laughs> What do you think, kids? Want well, the strikeout? What do you say? You they want to strike. Ask me. You want a ground ball? Or you want a strikeout? Like a swing and a miss. So let's see if Cole does it for the kids. On this pitch. All right, kids, get ready. But he yelled and screamed. Watch how quiet it will be if he hits a ground ball. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about right now. They're more interested in the cotton candy and the ice yeah, cream. They might not notice either <laughs> <Yeah>. way. <laughs> That's all part of coming to the ballpark is eating. Two and two. On Hector Sanchez. A lot of stuff going on here. It's Brandon Crawford on deck. Two and two. Whatever he does, he needs to get him here. Not yet. 98. 98. Yeah. Cranking it up. Right at the very top of the strike zone. It's three and two. Hector Sanchez, who had four hits, an extra inning game. Full count, Morse at first, one out. And another foul ball. Just uh, 50 plate appearances coming into this and 14 RBIs for Hector Sanchez. Maracay, Venezuela, 24 years old. Making Cole work here. Can he get him on this pitch? No. You know what this is doing is that when the strikeout comes, it's even going to be louder than oh, that's because right. of all the foul balls. He's building it's it building up. Building yeah. it. It'll be an avalanche of sound. Well, this will be the tenth pitch of this at bat. Turn up your volume control. No, it's no you better it's turn, turn it down. down. Yeah, yeah. You don't get hurt. To right field. Foul ball, come on. Fair ball. Enter Sanchez into second base with a double. Well, he has posed all kinds of problems for the Pirates in this series. They got a little slider. That's, I mean, it's. It's on the plate, but it, with the count being what it is, you have to throw it on the plate. You don't want to take a chance for a, a walk. And Sanchez just ripped it down that corner. I, I was hoping it was going to hook a lot. 
in the foul territory, but didn't happen. First visit this from Sirich. It's been a pain in our neck. Thank goodness he didn't catch last night. So he had to be exhausted yesterday, though. After that uh, five and a half hour game. Remember how many foul tips and shots he was taking? Yeah. Talking about it right now. All about the, his uh, the home plate umpire, Phil Cuzzy. Now at second. Cuzzy saw all those foul balls and pitches in the dirt. He was blocking. Now Brandon Crawford, who singled in the second. Crawford won that first battle against Garrett Cole. I think he broke his bat though. I don't think he hit it very well, but muscled it out just far enough to get it into the outfield grass. One out, the infield is back. Crawford pops this ball up. Alvarez gonna shade his eyes, makes the catch. Cole wins that battle. Hope that turns out to be a huge out. With a three-run lead, the, to have them not be able to get in a run with an out. Now Brandon Hicks, it's Crawford. Pops up with runners at second and third. When you have the infield back in your mind, you're out there in the mound, you're almost conceding the run already. Well, the infield's back. I just just get it out. But then if you can get a strikeout or a, a pop-up like that, that's just kind of like a little unexpected little jolt. To you like, oh hey, maybe I'm gonna get out of this without giving up a run. One more guy to get. Broken bat again. And he got him right away. Brandon Hicks swings at the first pitch. That long at bat by Hector Sanchez. He doubled. Crawford popped up. Hicks flies out. Still 4-1 bucks. Figures Ralph Kiner, Hall of Fame slugger for the Pirates, distinguished baseball announcer, and known among the Hollywood elite. Celebrate his life and career with interviews from his teammates, fellow broadcasters, and Ralph Kiner himself. Special inside Pirates baseball today at 4:30 on Root Sports.
Travis Snyder leads off. He's walked and singled home a pair of runs. Josh Harrison had been in the leadoff spot for four straight games. Now Snyder gets the opportunity. It takes ball one from Lincecum. Jay Hay this day off. Shirley Morton next to him. Well, what a job by Morton last night. Yeah, that for me was the big story of the, the game. I know that you know the, uh, the way the game finished kind of overshadowed everything, but Charlie was uh, outstanding. And that's the kind of uh, starting efforts we need to start getting on a regular basis. One set the, run in eight innings. The, the starting rotation set the bar high last year. The expectations are the same. Three and two on Snyder. And Walker to follow. Bullpen action, George Contos. Strikes him out. Four punch outs for Lincecum. Change up. Been going to other pitches more often recently because uh, they are hitting his fastball at a 444 clip. Coming into this game, hitting 207 off his change up, 276 off his slider, and 200 off his curveball. Still curveballs and change ups. Right? That's what that means. Yeah. Four fastballs, but never throw one for a strike. Yeah. Pick your spots very carefully for the slider. Go curveball changeup. Fastball for a strike. One and two. You see the uh, shift the same as his second at bat, different than the first at bat. Still have a shortstop third baseman on the left side. Not really a shift on this. Toward left center. Blanco waves off Morse. A lot of sun out there at the left field, left center area. You're, you're looking up in that direction. Tough to see sometimes. I don't see many clouds up there right now. So where they're looking. Andrew McCutcheon one for two. RBI single in the first. One McCutcheon career 125 hitter against Lincecum. But he's one for two today. The big swing one and two. Sanchez has been tapping that glove uh, last couple of innings in the dirt. He's getting a lot of those breaking balls now low. Where he wants it and have much better results than when he can get a swing down there. And the right field. 
Even though Belt was well off the line. Not a big hole between Belt and Hicks, but McCutcheon found it. Second time he's gone the other way, and he's two for three. Belt had gone a long ways off. A lot of times, though, even a first baseman makes that play with somebody that runs like McCutcheon, he's still not going to get the out because he'll beat the, the pitcher to the back. Two outs, possible running situation. Marte is the uh, definitely the base dealer on this team. Cutch He'll go occasionally, but oh, there he goes! Wow, didn't think he was going to run. He has not run much at all. Matter of fact, uh, he's run as often as Alvarez. He has as many attempts as Pedro Alvarez this season. Four. And McCutcheon four for four. Surprised me seeing take off. Talk about Marte being a player when he gets first base, it's two or three pitches and he's gone, especially with the two outs. So if he tries it again. Only four attempts this year. And just one attempt since uh, April the 12th. And now, McCutcheon has Lincecum's attention. Going this time and rolled toward Crawford. And McCutcheon will be stranded. Play that goes 6 3. 4 1 box. Brewers have lost six of their last ten. They're five up on the Cardinals. Six up on the Reds. The Pirates eight and a half back. The Diamondbacks winning last night.
Joaquin Arias. Bounced out his first time. And he'll bounce out to Jordy Mercer. And that will be it for Tim Lincecum. Pablo Sandoval will come out. And hit for the starter. Lincecum goes four innings. Eight hits, four runs, not a very effective start this afternoon. The Giants uh, have been patient uh, with struggling pitchers. You know, they, they kept Barry Zito in that rotation much longer than the fans would have liked, but uh, Zito did make uh, contributions down the road. This team. Winning World Series in 2010-2012, and Zito uh, played a role. Lincecum, we talked about his role as a reliever, and now as a pinch hitter, Kung Fu Panda off the bench, singles to right. It's hard to argue with the way the Giants do things yeah. out there. They had a lot of success. It's always the bottom line. The way you judge, it, do you win? Does the organization win? Giants uh, definitely do that more often than not. Ball hit hard to right, but it's going to be right at Snyder. <laughs> Two outs. Up Hunter Pence. Traffic on the Allegheny. Arch moving up. It's sand and gravel. Oh, anyway. where, where is it going? That's what I was curious oh. about. Look at it. <laughs> it's not you? getting there very quick. <laughs> where, it's where, do you, where do you think it's headed? I don't know. It's up river. Going up river. Heading up river, Greg. Yep. To have to find out where it's going and to have a camera stationed there during our broadcast. Mm -hmm. Huh? Yeah. We sent Terry. Look at, all the, look at all the guys that are walking around. Can we send out. Terry up to wherever yeah. they're taking that gravel? I mean, Terry's everywhere anyway. Is there a more active cameraman in all of sports than Terry? Oh, absolutely not. Three and zero on Pence. It says bounce to third, grounded to first, making his 205th consecutive start, and that is the current active streak in the National League. Impressive for him to have a, that streak like that. He's one of those guys that didn't seem to back off in the way the way he plays. He plays with uh, some wild abandonment, always going uh, reckless abandon for all sure. All over the place, uh, 100 mile an hour, running into things out in the outfield. He took a total of 16 innings off innings last year. All of his starts, he started every game. Only Giants player to start all 33 games this season. His current streak of 205 consecutive games played is second in baseball to Prince Fielder, who has made 538 straight starts. That has to come with an asterisk because some of those have been as a DH, which shouldn't even count, should it, Bob? Absolutely not. This ball lined to right field, and that's a fair ball. Brandon Belt getting healthy. In terms of his batting, and there's a throw toward the plate. They're going to get Belt going into third. He is going to make the last out of third base after he doubles in a pair of runs. 
to make it a 4-3 ball game. Belt brings home Sandoval and Pence and is thrown out at third. game. The Giants creep to within one. Brandon Belt has homered and doubled in a pair. Good name for a hitter, isn't it? Belt? Yep. He belted that one, but it's not a very smart move. Uh, making the last out at third base with the team's leading RBI guy on deck. Up by quite a bit. So that part of the play won't make uh, Bruce Bochy very happy. But we said Belt was really struggling coming into this series. That is a bat that they will be happy to have healthy again in the lineup as George Contos just up from Triple A Fresno. Spent most of last year. In the Giants bullpen, his third year in San Francisco, the former Yankee. This is Starling Marte to start things off here in the bottom of the fifth. Several years ago, when the Pirates traded Xavier Navy to the Navy to the Yankees. And got a handful of players, including Jose Tabata, Ross Ollendorf, Daniel McCutcheon, the pitcher, Jeff Karstens. They originally reported we're going to get Contos and Phil Coke in that deal. They reworked the trade and instead ended up with Jeff Karstens and Daniel McCutcheon. I don't know if I saw recently that Daniel McCutcheon retired. Jeff Karstens missed all of last year. He's uh, had that injured and surgically repaired shoulder. He hopes to get back playing again somewhere. One ball, one strike on Marte. And now it's one and two. We've talked a few times about the, uh, the Jerry Mills play at the, at the plate. Wasn't it McCutcheon pitching? Oh. Yep. You're exactly right. Marte in the air to right. Hence is over. Hence makes the catch. Well, this series concludes today, off day tomorrow, then the Cardinals in for three, and the homestand will conclude on 
Sunday Night Baseball, 8.05. First time the Pirates will appear on Sunday Night Baseball, nationally televised game, 8.05 first pitch Sunday night. Be there as the Pirates host their rival Cardinals on the national stage. Mother's Day, and for tickets, you can go to pirates.com. All mothers will receive a tote bag Sunday night from the MLB network. 805 first pitch on Sunday night baseball. Charlie Morton against Shelby Miller. Two and oh. the ball a little bit last couple games. He's four for his last six. Good fastball to hit. Davis two for three this afternoon. has struck out and bounced to second. Pirates scored two in the first, two in the second. I'd like to see them answer that two spot. There goes Ike Davis swinging a miss, and Ike Davis, even from Hector Sanchez's knees, is going to be thrown out. Hector throws well from his knees. Game the other day where he, the first two steals he made just two horrible throws. Those were all standing up. And then the third throw he made was right on the money. That's the one that got looked at, challenged. That one was from his knees, like this time. He throws better from his knees. Obviously a hit and run that uh, Mercer couldn't connect on. Attack the back closer play. than I thought. They're going to have to reteach the tag with the new challenge rules. Too many players have been getting away with. It's like nobody ever gets really tagged. Yeah, yeah. The, the ball beats yeah. you, get the ball down. I mean, that's the way it's right. always been. You know, guys have been, you know, playing like that forever, but not anymore. Mercer down on strikes. 4 3, Pittsburgh.
lead as we head to the sixth. And tomorrow marks the beginning of the 2014 NFL Draft. If the name Tyler Gaffney sounds familiar, and if it's called tomorrow, well, yeah, it, it should sound familiar for a good reason. Uh, just two years ago, he was drafted by the Bucks in the 24th round, went back to college. You see him here at the Combine in February. Gaffney returned to Stanford in 2013, where he rushed for, oh, 1,709 yards and 21 touchdowns. In case you forgot, he batted 279 in one season with the State College Spikes just a couple years ago. So, guys, maybe football was the right choice based on what he did last year at Stanford? Boy, so far it looks that way. We'll yeah. see how it ends up, right? Best of luck tomorrow. Yeah. Here's a guy that could have played probably any sport. <laughs> Michael Morse, big man. You think the days of the two sport pro athlete? Are we ever going to see another Bo Jackson or Deion Sanders? Oh, sure. Will we? I think so. Why not? I mean, who would have ever you know, predicted that uh, you know, we were going to see those two guys? Yeah. And I was just uh, amazed at the talent of Bo Jackson. Morse with a fly ball to center field. Another guy who played all the sports in high school, Andrew McCutcheon. Yeah, the baseball football skills are very different to you know, set of skills that you have to have to, not only just to play, but to excel. And, and Bo Jackson as a baseball player was just phenomenal. And obviously I don't know about football like, like baseball, but from what I could see, he was a pretty phenomenal football player also. You know, not only to survive in, in both sports, but to be one of the best in the league in both sports was pretty incredible. Uh, I mean, that's one of the things I always remember. But I Jackson. guess the one thing I, I wonder about, Bob, I hear more and more, um, especially high school kids, I, I, are the coaches don't want players, their, their oh, sure. stars, to be playing both sports. So they're almost forcing kids to decide. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's a shame. Forcing them to decide on one sport because the coaches don't want them playing more than what they were concentrating on that one sport. Yeah, I think that's been going on for quite a while, though. I've been even in uh, uh, Bo Jackson's day. I don't know if it's true or not, but speaking of Bo Jackson, I think that might be one of the reasons uh, um, he went to uh, help me out, Greg. I'm sorry, who? School, Bo Jackson. Auburn. Auburn instead of uh, Alabama was so he could also play baseball. I don't. I, I think, think I heard that somewhere. So I mean, it's been going along for a long but, but time. But that's interesting. He's forced to choose a school because of that. But uh, I, I have heard uh, Travis Snyder, of course, another. Most of these guys play. Oh, yeah, did I, play I, I, more I, than one sport in school. But I have heard Neil Huntington talk about that. That uh, it, it's kind of almost hurting the, the the talent level in baseball when it comes to drafting players. He. He wishes, and other GMs have talked about this, and scouts, they wish these players would play all the sports. Of course, there's a, a football star at Pine Richland, along with being a baseball star, uh, Neil Walker. But they think that it almost helps their baseball skills when they do play the other sports, certainly the athleticism. Left. Oh, nice one, two, three inning for Garrett Cole. Back to the bats. Get some more runs, leading four to three.
And here is today's Allegheny Health Network injury update. Orioles catcher Matt Wieters seeing Dr. James Andrews today about soreness in his right elbow. Had an MRI on the elbow on Monday. Been receiving treatment. Buck Showalter, the Orioles skipper, said that the team wants to make sure they know what they're dealing with. Uh, Baltimore Sun is reporting that Wieters is not going to need surgery. And that he actually might be available soon to DH once again. And that impacts the Pirates because they will be hosting the Baltimore Orioles during the next homestand. Starting on Tuesday night, May the 20th. Pirates went into Baltimore, of course. All that rain last week ended up playing a makeup doubleheader. The Orioles will come in for two. And then the Washington Nationals during the next homestand. And Bob, you were uh, looking up uh, information on Chris Davis, too. He, was he, did you say he's taking swings now? Uh, throwing in the outfield oh, also. Right. I think he had uh, 30 throws, I believe, 30? in the outfield I, yesterday. I didn't know it was 30 or 25. It was 30. It was 30. 30 yes. Okay. Let me write that down. Why did you ask it's a base it. hit to left field for Stewart. Good start because now Cole can try and advance him to second or trick him and swing and get a hit. Yeah. Did that in the second. Chris Stewart on base three times against his former club. I think he might get another hit. Not going to bunt? Well, he'll pretend that he's going to bunt and hit. Trying to think of ways, Bob, to overcome troubles of dropping down a sacrifice bunt. I'd heard that there was one manager who uh, suggested that he would keep the bunt on, especially for position players with two strikes, that maybe that would force them to get that bunt down. I've heard of that. What do you think of that? I've heard of that. Well, you know, most of the time they'll take it off, but if uh, the failures stack up, you have to try other methods. He misses that bunt try. Reason being, as a position player, maybe you're apt to be, you concentrate even more with two strikes because you don't want to go down with a strikeout if you bunt it foul. I think if, you, if you're sensing some lack of commitment to the bunts, that, that would definitely be a, a useful strategy. You see Cole concentrating, and nobody wants to get it down more than Cole. But now it's 0 2, so we're faced with the same situation we saw in the second inning. Pretty good effort. Is it quiet back? That's the top half of the baseball. It just wouldn't jump forward. Be interesting to see what Cole does here. With two strikes and Stewart on in the second, he singled to center. He showed bunt. And as the pitch came in, he swung away. He's obviously showing bunt here. And back to swinging away. But as Bob said, sometimes you'll bunt, sometimes you'll hit into a double play when you swing away. And he hits into the double play. With two strikes. And, and if you're a, a pitcher, you know, you're, let's say you're a 130, 140 hitter, the chances of you getting a base hit are down around one out of ten. The chances of you hitting a ground ball to somebody are far greater than that. So this becomes the result more often than the base hit. Studied harder at school if I knew that there was this much math in baseball. It's all about mm -hmm. numbers, numbers, odds, statistics. All right, it's become a whole business, and they have, including the Pirates, just about every team in baseball now hiring sabermetricians, statistical gurus, a staff, baseball numbers and information. One ball, one strike to count. It's 
speaking of math of the, the Pirates involved on Saturday the Pittsburgh Regional Fantasy Baseball World Series is going to take place in the Rivertown Brewing Hall of Fame Club 9 a.m. on Saturday students from all across the region have participated in the Pirates Charity Fantasy Baseball Math Program supported by Pirates GM Neil Huntington his wife Becca math based curriculum teaching important concepts for children in grades four through eight using baseball statistics promoting higher order science technology engineering and math skills preparing them for math based careers that's Saturday. Two with a walk, two runs single, a run scored. Bucks have had some action since that two run second, but been kind of quiet overall, certainly in terms of the scoreboard. They were down 1 0 going to the bottom of the first inning, and McCutcheon singled home Snyder. Marte doubled home McCutcheon, and they added to that lead with a two spot in the second. Line drive in a right center field by Travis Snyder. He's on base for the third time. And this will be a two base hit, maybe three. A little stutter step around second. Lunchbox eats some dirt with a trip, trip, triple. Hear the kids? They love the they triple. They like that. Right about here, they're up and roaring. A little breaking ball just dropped ahead of it. Perfectly placed to just barely roll out there to the fence, which I think caused a little bit of a confusion there for a moment between the two outfielders. Uh, who was going to pick it up? Well, I get Health Network Super Mo tracking Travis Snyder into third. No sign. People are always happy when they run. They're always smiling. Yep. It's a fun thing to do. Especially when you're running for third. Talked earlier about. Does that song go when you're sliding in the third? I can't remember. Not sure that one. But that gives the Pirates the league lead now in triples. And Walker can only fight this one off by popping it to second. Two hits. Strand a runner. Do not score. They lead four to three.
Four three Pirates lead. Going to the seventh inning. Keep those coming in on the Twitter using the hashtag Bucks fan photo and oh, I'm going to pronounce this name Ivania. He's got the souvenir there. Sean Grilly. Tweeting us that picture from the ballpark. The TNT fan photo. Hashtag Bucks fan photo. Not uh, Jason, one of Jason Grilly's children, by the way. Jason Jaden, his two children. Jason Grilly hopes to return before long. Meanwhile, Eric Cole had a quick one, two, three, sixth. There is grilled cheese. But uh, Cole, before. Charlie Morton last night. He had been the last pitcher and the only pitcher to throw eight innings in a game. That came after that poor start of his. Might be a little bit of a trend in his career that he does have a good start, or excuse me, if he has a poor start, a little chip on his shoulder maybe next mm, time yeah. out. Wouldn't be surprising at all. That was uh, an eight inning stint against the Brewers on the 20th of April. They've given up five runs in mm -hmm. the prior start. Well, that was against Cincinnati. Yep. Pirates hadn't had a, a pitcher go six or more innings going into last night's game since his start against the Cardinals back on the 25th of April. And he starts off. Brandon Hicks with a strikeout, six punch outs now for Cole. Now we got a little spoiled last year by the starting pitching. And definitely been a, a dry spell of late. Good hard breaking ball there for strike three. But hopefully it would Charlie Morton's effort uh, yesterday and now. Cole pitching uh, here into the seventh. I'd like to get that roll going. Yeah. A little competition. Mm -hmm. Hey, he went eight. I'm going seven. At, at least give the team six. It's almost so, every it, night. It, at it, least. It's very difficult to find a, a winning club that doesn't have a, at least pretty good starting pitching. You know, maybe it doesn't have to be leading the league, but. Top five. Yeah. The Pirates were fourth in the league, league in starting that, pitching that, uh, last year in ERA. Part. So yeah, be a be a top five team. You can kind of make up with starting pitching for some other things that maybe you lack a little bit that if you're not a big home run hitting team or something like that. In fact, the Giants, it was a couple years ago, the fewest home runs in, in baseball and, and won the World Series. Yeah. The, the, the pitching can cover up some things, especially the starting pitching. Francisco Liriano will go Friday night and heard uh, Ray Searidge talking on uh, our flagship station this morning. 93.7 the fan talking about Liriano and how encouraged he was after his bullpen session yesterday. He still has that that little groin injury in the back of his mind the one that uh, almost forced him to be scratched from opening day. And second to last start uh, spring training. Suffered a little groin injury. And the first time in a while, he told Ray Searidge that he didn't feel it at all and was really anxious to get back on the mound on Friday night. Now a one out single. Angel Pagan is going to pinch hit in the bullpen. Will be activated. So 
Well, Ray Surridge goes to the mound. Going to buy the bullpen a little bit of time. Justin Wilson will start to throw. We'll take a look at our uh, road ahead for the Pirates. They're brought to you by Nissan. After that off day, three game series against the Cardinals. Told you Francisco Liriano on the mound for the Bucks against Michael Waka. First time for a Waka at PNC Park since he took that no hitter to the eighth inning of game four of the National League Division Series. Saturday, Lance Lynn against Edison Volquez. Sunday night, Charlie Morton against Shelby Miller. The National League telecast game at 8.05. You'll think about being here with a big series against the Cardinals. Pirates hope to be uh, gaining some momentum before welcoming in the Redbirds. A win today gives them back to back series wins. And here is Angel Pagan against Cole, who's ready to throw his 95th pitch, and it's a ball. Pagan tied for ninth in the league in hitting at 323. He was 0 for 4 last night, 3 for 7, the opening game of the series. Pulls this foul past first base coach Roberto Kelly. It's a ball and a strike on Angel Pagan. He's batting for George Contos, who relieved Tim Lincecum. Contos gives up three hits, no runs in his two innings. The switch hitting Pagan, batting from the left side, and concerned now about Joaquin Arias. Right-hander for the Giants is Juan Gutierrez. He'll be the new San Francisco pitcher. Ah. It'll be interesting to see what happens with Garrett Cole. Left-handed hitter Gregor Blanco is on deck. One ball, one strike count on the pinch hitter Angel Pagan. Time was called just as Cole was about ready to deliver. Pitcher's in a stretch position. Let him pitch. Did that uh, bug you a lot when you pitched? Yeah. I know you hate it now, but I'm just wondering. No, I hate it then. When you pitched. <laughs> what are you trying to say? <laughs> you're such an easygoing guy. I mean. No, I didn't like that. But yeah. the, the problem with it then, when you're out there, the man, it, to me, it was such a distraction. My concentration was the best in the world. So when I'm like this, and all of a sudden I look up and I see somebody like backing out, going time or something, it would mess me up. I would now stop my delivery. Whether they call time or not, I would ah. come to a stop. I'll throw the ball, just stand there and wait. Yeah. When I'm ready. Oh, fly ball to left. Big out there for Cole to get one of the league's leading hitters to pop out to left. Ended hitting Gregor Blanco to the plate. Pretty apparent that Cole needed to get Pagan to stay in the ball game. Yeah, if he had a runner in scoring position, probably wouldn't still be out there. Wilson is ready. Then Hurdle going to give Cole an opportunity to get the final out, give him a chance to go seven. at the 97 pitch mark Blanco lined out to right field his last time up. Strike one. First two times Cole struck him out.
There goes the runner. And Blanco fouls it back and out of play at 97. It looked as though Arias had a pretty good jump. Well, still got plenty of gas in the tank. Well, that was a good jump, but I. Well, Blanco can't take a the pitch there. Yeah. Zero oh and two on Gregor Blanco. Yeah, you can, but now it's, now it's all and two. You really put yourself in a severe hole. You might take a strike if you're trying to let somebody steal. But awfully confident hitter. Take two. He struck him out to end his day. Garrett Cole gives up three runs in his seven innings of work. He strikes out his seventh. It's the third time. He's gotten Blanco. What a way to finish. And the youngsters love that strikeout. You could really hear them roar, and they're going to stand and here, take me out to the ball game. And we're going to keep it right here at PNC Park. A matinee game on Root Sports. Watching at home on Root Sports as we sing, Take Me Out to the Ball Game. Strong innings. Leaving with the lead. Well, he has gone seven or more in three of his last four starts. And Bob, really, other than Brandon Belt, Belt's the only guy that caused damage. You have a Cole. Cole today. The uh, the fastball sitting uh, around in between 94 and 97. Those were his velocities. Good uh, command as usual, throwing strikes, challenging people. Maybe should have skipped challenging belt. As you said, other than that, nothing wrong. And his line, seven strikeouts, one walk. Belt hit a home run off of him in the first inning, and then a two-run double off of him in the fifth. The seven strikeouts, second highest total of the season. He punched out 10 Cubs in six innings, his second start of the year. Juan Gutierrez now on in relief. Gutierrez pitched one and two thirds innings on Monday night, the 13 inning affair, and he gave up a couple of runs. Andrew McCutcheon leads off. McCutcheon flied out against Gutierrez on Monday night. Today against Tim Lincecum, McCutcheon was two for three with an RBI single in the first. Ball one. Touching Alvarez Marte looking to add on. Four runs, 11 hits for the Pirates. They've stranded seven. Well, 
those horns called? Man? Uh, I used to know the name when we were in Montreal. We used to talk about it all the time. Something. Uh, oh, oh, look out there. Houston, the soccer. The losers, what are they? Yeah. Vuvuzela. Vuvuzela, right? McCutcheon. Oh, Vuvuzela. Yeah. By the way, our. Uh, hey, that's the limbo right yeah. there. I don't want to get too many of them up there. They got to like those horns. Miss those Montreal days. Three and one. By the way, thanks to Zach, our stage manager, he lets us know that that barge that we saw earlier was the D.L. Johnson heading upriver. Belongs to the Campbell Transportation Company and it was headed to Cheswick, the Cheswick Power Plant in Springdale, PA. So that's where Terry needs to be next time. Didn't it look like it had like gravel? It did, there? yeah. To a power plant. Yeah. They usually. There's Terry. He's ready oh, to go on is. that barge. Yep. He's yeah, everywhere. A lot of fun to make a trip like that. Yeah. 3 1 high in the air to center. Blanco makes the catch. By the way, I saw uh, our buddy Mark Grant uh, the other day for the Padres, color analyst, and Dick Enberg doing a game from. What I guess would be the Lexus Club seats here. It was great fun. So I'm going to request that. Would you like to do the game down there from the front row? Not really. <laughs> yeah, I like to do the game from the stands. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, I don't know about the Lexus Club stands. I want to get out someplace else. It's up to him, the boss, yeah. Mark Garda. I don't think uh, it. It doesn't look like he's in favor. No, it doesn't look like Cindy Boyd and uh, the engineer yeah, next to him. When we were at Three Rivers, we were down there every night. Yeah, I, that was, I wasn't thrilled with that because we were five rows back. It didn't make much sense. But, I mean, first row near, uh, well, maybe, I don't know, maybe uh, maybe in one of the camera wells by the dugout where Dan Potash is. Be good. I want to do one from uh, the... I mean, they were actually. I want to do the deck on yeah. pop night. That's what I want to do. Mark Grant was actually yelling at, at the players on deck, and they were responding to him. It was hilarious. He was yelling at the umpire. They're probably doing that too. One ball, one strike on Alvarez with one out. Four, three Pirates. Checks, takes. Did he? Danny, did he go? Dan Potash has a, a good angle down there. I do. I have a very good view. But bring your glove if you come down here. Oh, do, do you bring your glove? No. Well, I'm learning. <laughs> I'm learning the hard way. And sunglasses, glove, sunglasses, yeah, and sunblock. And uh, well, the other day you had a, a Pittsburgh City policeman. Yep. Kind uh, of guarding things. He's there. He's yeah. right back here. Yeah. He's behind bars. <laughs> very, very good. Nice. Two and two. Yeah, good view down here. Keith Reese right behind him. Sunscreen's important though. Got to watch yep. out for the five head. And then Dan protecting Keith Reese. Yeah, Keith's a good man. Got that. He got the Roy Hop shot of Neil Walker. Yep, that's right. Neil Huntington said it was his favorite shot ever. He had Neil Huntington on his radio show the other day. He said, "I think that image will stand out for the rest of my life." There's a nice pick by Belt and a throwing a strike to the pitcher Gutierrez, covering two away. Two down, a fly out to center and a ground out to Belt. Well, Gutierrez threatening to retire the Pirates. One, two, three. Bucks have not been set down in order yet. And who can blame Neil Huntington? Because that, I mean, that's an epic shot right there. Roy Hobbs like from the natural the thing that I liked about it, it hadn't been rain, like raining all night it was just at that moment it started coming down he got the big yeah. hit and then the rain went away yeah. it was really a great moment the the fans do you remember this Greg they had all gotten up and were moving as quick as they could to get out of the yep. rain he hit the ball and everybody froze in their spot to, to watch the flight of the baseball 
as the rain was pouring down. It really was a great moment. He pulled a kiner, did Walker. So they used to do it at Forbes Field, I hear. His last at bat. Pirates were uh, not a good team in terms of the wins and losses when Kiner was playing, but they always waited for Kiner's last at bat, and they kind of stood up near the exits, waited for the last A.B., and then they headed out. That's what happened. Steve told me. i got to believe Steve. And Marte to Crawford. And then the Pirates do go down in order. Pirates still lead by one. A 705 game two of the three game series. And we invite you to stay after the game. Dick Sporting Goods presents the Belly Fireworks. Win great prizes. It's an Eaton Park scratch and win Saturday. More tickets go to Pirates.com. Game two of the three game series, a fireworks night. Buckos Cardinals. Three game series starts Friday. And then fireworks on Saturday. And don't forget Sunday night baseball, nationally televised. And uh, boy, this is a, kind of a shocker uh, because. Clint Hurdle over the years, he's unpredictable, the skipper of the Pirates, but uh, oftentimes he will say, I don't like to bring a guy out to the start of the inning in a close game because if somebody gets a hit, then I've got to bring a reliever on. And Clint does not like to bring his relievers in the middle of an inning. He prefers them to start clean, as he says, but a vote of confidence for Eric Cole. And a fly ball to left. I wonder if he's going to let him pitch the belt. Good question. He gets Pence on one pitch. I don't see him anywhere. I think he's going to let him go. How about this? Old school like. Yeah, it sure is. One hundred one pitches thrown. Today and it is Belt who has given him the most trouble. What's with the half? Is that when somebody calls time and you like you wind up? Well, how do you get a half pitch? Ball one on Belt, homered in the first, and doubled in a pair in the fifth. Also flied out in the fourth inning. I have to figure Cole wants to be careful here, but you also have to figure. Well, I mean, he had. Wilson ready in the seventh after Arias got on, and you well, that figure that uh, he's not going to face Morse if Belt gets on. <laughs> Ground ball on the first two outs. Well, the pitch before that was 98 miles an hour. So no if, problem if with he, the if velocity. Well, right? Yeah, if he's looking up at the velocities to see, you know, is he still strong? Well, the answer to that is. Is a definite yes. This one's 96. The previous pitch was 98. So he's, he's still got plenty of juice left. His career high in terms of 
pitch count 108 his first start this season against the Cardinals. He's at 104 currently. Ball one on Michael Morris. You know, the other thing too, Bob, I wonder, and I don't know that Clint Hurdle would even say this because he's not going to show any signs of not having confidence in his bullpen, but I wonder because of the fact the Pirates have had a handful of blown saves already, the bullpen has been a bit shaky at times, and he talked you know, the other day about how they've been challenged with, especially with inherited runners this season. Stabbed by Cole! And they are riding the Cole train this afternoon. One, two, three, and out. Old school afternoon. The telecast is presented by the authority of the Pittsburgh Pirates and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Pirates lead 4-3 going to the bottom of the eighth inning. Trying to take two of three from the Giants. And just a reminder as you enjoy a cold one to look forward to Miller time later in tonight's game brought to you by Miller Lite. For today's game. And Garrett Cole, well, I guess this means he's done, but you wonder if the Pirates, and you'd certainly love for them to add on, if they were to go down one, two, three, and Cole, his spot in the order wouldn't come up. I wonder if Clint Hurdle considered allowing Cole to even go out for the ninth inning. But it looks like that decision's been made. As Ike Davis steps to the plate two for three. Yeah, that would be a, an awful lot of congratulations just for having a good eight. Yeah, right. <laughs> hey, nice one, two, three. Yeah. I didn't give me hey, a hug. Hey, you go. Well, we've seen that with in the past after, you know, laid down a punt or, or the, 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 there was a some pitcher for another team on the road trip, I believe, was getting high fives in the dugout after going like five and a third innings, giving up four or five runs. They're all high-fiving them. You never know. See if Davis can have a three hit afternoon. Say Tabata. Might he be asked to pinch hit? Careful swing that bat in the dugout. Cole still out there. Him sitting there? Yeah. Gene Segura got whacked in the head last week. Ryan Braun was 
Swinging a bat in the dugout. Two and one. That's why I always stay at the clubhouse. I don't want to get hurt. <laughs> so when Leland went up, what are you doing in the dugout? I don't want to get hurt, Skip. The dugout was tiny. Two two count on Ike Davis. I'm going to take a little walk and think about this now. Starling Marte. Great homestand. Double. RBI in the first. And indeed, Ike Davis. Thought about it. Three hits. After collecting a couple of hits last night. Davis has now reached base safely in six straight games. And he has five hits and ten at bats in this series against the Giants. Jordy Mercer looks for his first hit. Unless he tries to bunt, and he does, and he gets it down. Sacrifice accomplished. 3 4. Kind of. All right, a little insurance. Jordy Mercer gets the sacrifice. Ike Davis. Who came in batting 208 and with his three hits today now up to 237. Josh Harrison will pinch run for him. Three hit day for Ike Davis. Part of a 12 hit attack. The Pirates had 16 hits in 13 innings on Monday. Last night they scratched out a 2 1 win on five hits. And Chris Stewart on base three times. He has two of the 12 hits. The Pirates backup catcher and former Giant. Strike on Chris Stewart with the pinch runner Josh Harrison at second. Bucks have not scored since the second inning, even though they've had plenty of action on the bases. It's an important insurance run. Mark Melanson loosens in the bullpen. Gabby Sanchez comes out on deck to bat for Cole. Fouled off to the right. And it's 0 and 2 on Chris Stewart. Gabby Sanchez. Josh Harrison wanting to score. Juan Gutierrez, the third pitcher today for Bruce Bochy. Instructions from his third baseman Joaquin Arias. No one two. And popped him up on the infield. 
First baseman belt calls for it, makes the basket catch. That ball just wasn't hitting all that high for the belt to have an easy time of it. Sanchez realized that right away. He got out there thinking he was going to have to make that play because the belt wouldn't have time to come in. Gabby Sanchez, 259 batting average. Last six starts hitting 381, but now off the bench. Gabby Sanchez, two for ten as a pinch hitter. Mark Melanson is getting ready. Right towards center. Gregor Blanco will make the catch. Mark the shark has just one run with which to work. Looking for a save and a series win. Standing start from Garrett Cole. He has a chance to get the W. The Pirates can get three more outs. We we'll go to the ninth inning. Pittsburgh leading the Giants four to three. Gabby Sanchez pinch hit stays in the game to play first base. And Mark Melanson who had a blown save opportunity on Monday is right back at it. Five, six, seven men in the order do up. Just that one run. Got to be perfect this afternoon. Tried a couple of times to get some uh, insurance across. Could never find that extra run. And we'll see about the uh, approach, too, by the way, of these Giants hitters. Hunter Pence started that ninth inning with a base hit to right. Buster Posey followed with a base hit to right. Michael Morse followed with a ground out to second. All three right hand hitters going the other way. There is Garrett Cole. We'll watch and see if Melanson can't save it for him as 
First batter Hector Sanchez. The switch hitter swings and misses. a note that uh, I still find hard to believe the Pirates Media Relations Department passes along that this is the first time Pirate starters have gone at least eight innings in back to back games since August of 2007. Coincidentally it was against the Giants. Charlie Morton Say last night. Earlers were. It does not. Charlie Morton went eight innings. Last night, Cole, eight innings today. In line foul. Paul Mahalan. You think Mahalan, huh? Uh, Mahalan and Duke. All right. I'll go with that. Or, I think I think Duke and Mahalan. I think Duke. Oh, that one, that pitch order? first, yeah. Scores Alani and Mahalam, by the way. Tom oh, scores Alani and Paul Mahalam. I didn't. Oh. I have other people do that for me now. <laughs> Mark Melanson taking over that closer's role with Grilly on the DL, as he did last summer. Saved 16 games last year. To right, Snyder. One down. I'm sure uh, they'll be talking about back-to-back -to -back starts by Pirates pitchers going eight innings on the post game. Brought to you by Allegheny Health Network. Taking you on the field inside the clubhouse. Game reaction, Clint Hurdle, our Root Sports analyst. Pirates post game coming up after this one on Root Sports with Robin T. Behind section 103 near the Budweiser bow tie bar. After the game, Brandon Crawford is one for three today. Takes ball one. One to know on Crawford. Strike and into center, McCutcheon racing in and a diving catch by Kutch. Nice play. I think even he had to go ahead pretty first excited. For it. You see Kutch leave his feet a lot, but it's always feet first, but he couldn't do that on this one. This ball was a, a kind of a jam shot. Falling fast. They're playing deep. Trying to guard against an extra base hit. He had a long way to come. Excellent play. Twenty, nearly 24,000 on their feet here. As the Pirates try to take back to back series.
lays it. Take two of three from the Giants. Now the Pirates are going back to a recipe that worked so often last year. Get behind great starting pitching. Well, this is the first time a Pirate starter has won a game since April the 17th. Edinson Volquez beat the Brewers. Today, Garrett Cole beats the Giants. A lot of youngsters on hand enjoying their Pirates. And Travis Snyder very much involved on base three times. Mark Melanson right back on the saddle gets the save. That's the life of the closer. Yeah. You can't ever feel bad about a blown save. The next day you might be back out. Uh, you, you just have to be kind of thick skinned. And Melanson definitely uh, knows how to handle that role. Even though it's not his all the time. He's been in that situation enough in the past. That he can step in and get the job done. So the Pirates take two of three from the San Francisco Giants back to back series wins as they uh, raise that Jolly Roger in center field. And now let's go out to Robin T. Greg and Bob, thanks very much. And Teak, now the third consecutive series the Pirates have won after losing six consecutive series. So they're slowly starting to get themselves back towards that 500 mark. Yeah, and like we were talking about in the pregame show. You can't just all of a sudden hurry up and get it all back at once. You have to take the slow and steady pace. They've done it for the last three series. Hopefully you continue it you know, for three, four more series, and you'll pick up enough ground. You know, it seems like you're seven games back. Oh, my gosh, it's a mile back. But uh, you're really not that far. Slowly you pick it up, and then uh, you know, you'll have yourself right back where you want to be, which is in the middle of the pennant race. I think what's encouraging, too, Teak, is two straight strong starting pitching performances. This team had the fourth best starters ERA last year, and they were 14th going into this game today. Now Morton and Cole with back-to-back -back good outings, and Garrett Cole is standing by with Dan Potash. Danny? Well, Rob, believe it or not, it's uh, the first time a Pirates starter has had a victory since the middle portion of April. Garrett, why did you feel so comfortable this afternoon out on the mound? Um, you know, Chris and I were working well behind the plate. We scored some runs early, allowed us to get comfortable, and, um, you know, just rolled from there. Now, today was your 26th career start. You've never had a complete game. We thought you were done for the day after the seventh, but you bounced back out for the eighth. Were you looking for nine innings today? Did you have to try to have a couple conversations with Clint, let you go out there and finish? Uh, no, I mean, you know, just kind of, I think the way with the bullpen has been uh, grinding right now. Um, you know, I was in a position to maybe eat up one more inning and, and hopefully hand the ball to the closer and, uh, you know, fortunately got out of that inning unscathed. I got to ask you about this. You had your fifth hit this afternoon. We're always talking about what you do on the mound, but you could hit, and then you had a head first dive into second base. You got dirt all over your jersey. Does that speak to the kind of competitor you are? Because I think Pittsburgh likes competitors, no? Is that what you're all about? Yeah, I mean, you know, you just try to do everything you can to win the ball game. I only play like once a week, so <laughs> when I get in, I try to make as big a difference as I can. Before I let you go, I know the last home stand was a little tough, but to take two or three from Toronto and then two or three from the Giants, nice little building steps? Yeah, I mean, we're moving in the right direction. You know, we're playing good baseball. Uh, uh, looks like a couple things have clicked. We've pitched well and hit well at the same time, and, um, you know, got a day off, and then we've got to get after the cards. Great, congrats on the victory. Thank you. Thank you very much. Robin Teak, it's all yours, guys. There goes the Cole train. Dan and Garrett, thanks very much. And by the way, uh, you could hear it in Danny's question to Garrett Cole. My, uh, my fault, I want to correct that. Two straight series the Pirates have now won as they try to climb back to 500. Not three. Hopefully they'll get the third against the St. Louis Cardinals this you're, weekend. You're Karnak the Magnificent. I'm, you're looking I'm, I'm, ahead. I'm looking forward on this nine-game home like stand where the Bucks are four and two right now with the Cardinals coming to town. But first, as we promised earlier, it is Miller time presented by Miller Lite. And T, how about the work from Garrett Cole today? Yeah, you know, Charlie Morton went out last night, you know, kind of just threw down the gauntlet. Hey, I'm just going to put a good start out there for him. Garrett Cole picks up right where Charlie left off. Just an outstanding job. And, yo, there, we talked about it in the pregame show. There were a couple, couple times where he gave up just one run. And, you know, got a no decision loss. Well, his team was able to get enough runs for him today. Little, uh, little less than before. But nonetheless, still good for Garrett Cole. And, uh, yeah, now he's back on the winning trail also. Second straight series win for the Pirates. They win by the final score of 4-3. to three. Coming up next on Pirates Postgame, presented by the Allegheny Health Network, we will have 
highlights from this game, post-game reaction. You'll also hear from manager Clint Hurdle as well. Teak will look forward to the series coming up against the St. Louis Cardinals. Some good things happening down on the farm and highlights from around Major League Baseball. All that and more coming up next.